There is no precedent, not in history, of making anything that vaguely sits outside the box that isn't by its very nature going to be polarizing. Today I'm going to share with you guys what it was like to photograph the director, Boz Lerman. If you're not familiar with him, he did Romeo and Juliet, the newest version of it. He did Strictly Ballroom. He did a whole bunch of movies that you probably are familiar with. Now, I had never met him before. I photographed him for Adobe Max. Initially, I only photographed him on stage, but... I went the extra mile on that job, and although they did not ask me for these types of portraits, I kind of took it upon myself to over-deliver, and what I did is independently asked a lot of different participants, VIPs, at Adobe Max if I could shoot some portraits. Everyone obliged. They were all very kind and generous. It only took a simple ask. Now, with Boz Lerman, he had a giant entourage. So this was very different than my experience photographing Nick Offerman. Boz Lerman had like maybe 13 to 20 people in the room if I'm remembering correctly. But there was a few things I learned from him that were fascinating. And the experience of actually working with him had an impact on me. So first, backing up, it started when I saw him on stage when I was photographing him. Now when I'm working and I'm photographing people on stage, I'm really focused on visuals. I am listening as well, um, more for cues to get the right shots, um, less so for my own entertainment, but I couldn't help but also listen to him because he said some really fascinating stuff. The first one was that he knows he's a divisive director. He knows that people have been critical of his choices, for example, using modern music in The Great Gatsby. But he had this great statement that really stuck with me, and he said, There is no precedent, not in history, of making anything that vaguely sits outside the box that isn't by its very nature going to be polarizing. And that's really stuck with me. It's really quite true, and I think the balance is always pushing it the right amount where you're not alienating anyone too much, but you're getting that recognition. But anyway, when it was time to photograph him, I noticed he was doing what I will typically do on a job. He was genuinely invested in me. A, he understood as a professional, okay, this guy has a job to do. How can I help him on his job? Um, and B, like he showed genuine interest in me. He asked what I was doing. He asked um, engaging questions as I was asking him engaging questions. When we went from one location to another, he didn't kind of disappear into the entourage. He stuck right by me going down the stairwell and, and kept talking to me like he was genuinely interested in who I was as a person. When it came time to photographing him, he was game. Like He was like, I know the whole I know the whole thing. You need great shots. I want you to have great shots. I want great shots of me, I'm sure. And so he was just coming up with ideas. It was very collaborative. It's not always going to be that way. Uh, you're not going to always get an eccentric, artistic person uh, who's really engaging with you and willing to kind of work together. But in this case, he really was. Now, when you put your work online, you're always gonna get someone who has something negative to say, uh, that knows nothing of the circumstance, and it's just an armchair kind of keyboard warrior and says, oh, here's a criticism um, I've come up with. Your lighting's this, your lighting's that, or your, your, this pose is no good, whatever. And they don't understand what it's like to actually be in those rooms, in those actual situations where you're working with someone like that. So I wanna share with you guys my images. Uh, which I'm actually quite proud of. Some of the criticism I've gotten in this location, not with Boz so much, but a few shots of Nick Offerman, were that, oh, why are you photographing him in a bathroom? And it's like, dude, the fact that you think it's a bathroom and you've never been in like a green room tells me you don't know what you're talking about. So maybe you shouldn't, you know, <laughs> it's easy to talk when you're behind a, a screen using a fake name. But anyway, 
These are the kinds of images you literally only have seconds to make. Uh, I think I've on I only worked with Boz for maybe a minute or two, I'm not kidding. And I was able to quickly grab a few different shots. Uh, I don't know why, there was like an apple box in the room, but we used that. We fired off a few different poses and that was that. And honestly, I think a lot of the ability to get shots very quickly are two things. One, if you are technically proficient to the point where you can make decisions very quickly or you can have a vision, come up with ideas, but know how to execute them very quickly without having to think about it. And two, a lot of the buildup prior to the actual shooting will make the shooting faster. And what I mean by that is because I engaged with him in conversation and he did the same, we built rapport incredibly quickly so that when it was time to shoot, we could knock these out really quickly. And so I hope this video gave you a few uh, ideas. Um, I hope there were some lessons hidden in there. I don't tell the stories like, I don't tell stories like this in order to like brag and show off or anything. I only wanna make content that I think people will find beneficial. And I think knowing what it's like for the photographer in the situations that you hopefully will be in one day can be beneficial. If you wanna support my channel, a simple like and subscribe will go a long way or please share this content with anyone you think might like it uh, or benefit from it. If you want to support me, please consider checking out my Patreon page. I created a Patreon page to make my channel more sustainable, but more importantly, I created it so I could help you further on your photographic journey. I offer portfolio critiques, uh, photo critiques, SEO advice, whatever you need. It's an option depending on what level you're supporting me at. Thank you guys for watching. I read this great quote that hopefully you actually said. I hope so too. The critical fallout is pretty much identical for all my films. It's not just mild disappointment. It's like I've committed a violent, heinous crime against a personal family member. It does sound like me, yeah. <laughs> so how, how does critique, how does it affect you? How does it affect your work? Well, I mean, no one likes, I, I tell you what is the most, uh, the, the painful part, and then I'll tell you the rational, the rational response. The painful part is, I never start these things out, ever, to, to <laughs> I never do this to hurt anyone. <laughs> you know? and particularly a critic. Uh, and you know, that's a job too, and, and I have great empathy for critics because there are great critics, and then there are a lot of people who just have an opinion, and everyone at a dinner table has an opinion, you know? But I think the, the sensitive part of it is, is that when you convince a, a financier, a friend, um, a high-profile artist, who really, you know, to be very high profile and very well known, to put themselves on the line and go with you down a road and to be trying to birth something and get it out there and then you, it's a bit like having a, a child, Annie, which I have two. I never actually gave birth to them, so I can't really claim that part. Um, but the metaphor works, I think, because you imagine it, you do something, the child, you get pregnant with it, and the child is growing, and then it's born, and until it's actually living and growing, you know, pretty much when it's born, it's a bit like a baby seal. There are a lot of people who want to sort of club it to death, you know? And so you're trying to protect it, you're trying to get beyond that, you're letting it grow up. Like these films, they're so much a part of my life, but I, they're like having, you know, not even a teenage, child. It's kind of like they've gone on, they have a life, people come up to you, they talk about the films as if they're a child of yours that's at college they fall in love with, and they have an opinion and a relationship to the film that you simply have, no, can't even possibly have. They go on and have a life without you. So you're just trying to give it life and get it out there. So the, the critical part of it, I really worry, really for myself, I grew up 
you know, in a fairly volatile environment, in a very tiny town. So I'm used to that. You know, we were not popular, my brothers and I. Hmm. Um, but, but I worry for everybody else, dragging everyone else in it. Having said that, you never, there is no precedent, not in history, of making anything that vaguely sits outside the box that isn't by its very nature going to be polarizing. 